Hey everybody, ABC 10 meteorologist Brendan Minchev here. I hope you all had a good week. It is the weekend again, so it's time for another drought update. Finally, all of the drought monitors reflect the rain that we've seen this month because with the most with last weekend's update, it didn't take into account the rain that we saw on the 18th. So even though we didn't have any rain this calendar week, the drought update, uh, because the data runs from Tuesday to Tuesday, this week's drought update finally reflects all the rain that we've seen. So uh, we've seen 7.54 inches, over seven and a half inches the month of January and the average to date. So the average as of the 28th of January is 3.51 inches. So that means we are quite a bit above where we normally would be for this point in the month and the month and as a whole. That's some good news. So this month, about four inches above where we normally would be for the water year as a whole, over eight and a half inches above average. That's good news. The total so far over 18 inches. The average to date is nine, uh, about nine and a half inches. And our departure from normal, as we just talked about, is eight and a half inches. So that is good news. And as we take a look at the state as a whole, we notice a lot of big numbers here. The water year started October 1st. So departure from average for the water year, South Lake Tahoe, Stockton, Fresno, San Francisco, Redding, Eureka, Bakersfield, Santa Barbara, Los Angeles, and even now San Diego, all above average for this point of the water year. And Palm Springs is not that far behind uh, where they normally should be. So we are off and running to a good start for the water year, calendar year as well. Uh, we're going to need some more as we work through what's left of the rainy season. We're about a, a little more than halfway through the rainy season. So we need some more before we really hit those drier months. Uh, but honestly, we are doing good as things stand right now. Uh, so the drought monitor for January 29th, you can see 0.64% of the state is not in any drought at all. That is up here in the far northwestern part of California. Uh, most of the state is not quite in the abnormally dry category, but the moderate drought. So 56.99% of the state, that's this kind of beige color here that you see. That's that moderate drought category. The yellow, the abnormally dry. Uh, and you can see that's mostly the central coast uh, north of Los Angeles just before you get to the Bay Area. Severe drought, 32.57% of the state. The orange color, there is no extreme drought and there is no exceptional drought. Uh, with the latest monitor. This is the best the drought in California has been since November 17th of 2020. We can compare these using uh, the drought scale, uh, the drought index here. Uh, basically, it just adds up the percentages of what the state of the drought that the state is in or whatever region you're looking at. So 212 was the scale for November 17th, 2020. Now it is 221. So again, it is the best the drought has been since November of 2020. That's been a long time. A little bit of rain is in the forecast for this Sunday, just a touch, not really much at all. You can see maybe a tenth of an inch uh, across the valley. That is about all we're looking at. So this storm really not going to have much of an impact and even snow, not looking at a lot of snow either, about half a foot in some places. Uh, Immigrant Gap, Donner, very close to half a foot. But for the most part, uh, the Sierra with this storm that is working its way through today for Sunday, um, mostly going to be two to six inches, maybe locally higher amounts along the highest peaks and passes. That is about it. So even though we're looking at a little bit more precipitation in the forecast today, really not going to impact uh, any of the snowpack or drought numbers all that much. But talking about reservoirs, uh, let's take a look at the latest. This was updated January 28th. So Shasta, 87% of the average to date capacity at 56%. That's some good news. Oroville, 111% of the average to date capacity. 64% and Folsom 113% uh, and capacity is at 51%. As we learned uh, with Folsom last week, Folsom is mainly used for flood protection for the greater Sacramento area, not quite as much for water storage. That is more the responsibility of Shasta and Oroville, but especially Shasta because it is so large. The snowpack is also doing very well right now. The Northern Sierra, 105% of April 1st average. April 1st, typically when we see the highest amount of snowpack. So that's why we usually compare everything to April 1st. So that's good news. Northern Sierra, 130% of, of April 1st average in the Central Sierra. More good news, 152% of average in the Southern Sierra. So statewide, 128% our snowpack is of the April 1st average. So that's good news. We need that to continue to stick, stick around. And as long as we don't get any significant rain events, as opposed to these rain and snow events, uh, we will be just fine, honestly, as we work towards April. But I want to break these numbers down a little bit more. We always talk about uh, water uh, storage, as in reservoirs and lakes, and then kind of separately a snowpack. We always say they're related, but let's take a look at how these numbers really are related and how they really impact the state as a whole. So uh, this is from the California Nevada Climate Application Program, CNAP. 
Uh, and, and what we can do with these graphics here is we can really see how much the reservoir storage and the snowpack storage contributes and which part or both of those numbers are really helping us right now as to where we are with our water storage. So this is for Northern California, the Western Sierra really as a whole. So it's kind of this part of California, the Northern part and down in towards the central part of the state as well. So reservoir storage, just a little bit below average. The solid blue is the average for the water year. Uh, and you can see that line, the lighter blue line just below that. When we talk about snowpack, so the reservoir plus snowpack, look how much better we're doing. Uh, we're actually above average as a whole when you compare uh, or take into account both the reservoir storage, the liquid water, and the frozen water, the snowpack storage, way above. But the majority of that is coming from snowpack uh, because you can see we're above average in terms of water in reservoirs and snowpack, but below average if we're just looking at our reservoir storage. And we'll zoom in a little bit there, and you can kind of get that number. Again, the solid blue is your average, and then the darker uh, kind of gray is your average for both the reservoir plus snowpack. All right, let's move on and we'll talk about Shasta specifically. So Shasta just talked about this, 87% of average today, 56% capacity. That blue line there is average. This is just lake level for Shasta right now. You can see it is still trending upwards right now and it's pretty close to average again, 87%. That's pretty good. It is in a much better spot than it has been in years past. But uh, when we take a look at Shasta's snowpack and Shasta water, you can see the reservoir storage below average, as we would be expected. We just saw that on the previous map. And then when we take a look at reservoir plus snowpack, this is just for the Shasta area. Reservoir plus snowpack is also below the average for this time of year. So even though we've had all this rain, we've had all this snow, uh, and yes, the drought has improved significantly. I'm not saying it's not, and it has significantly helped our situation. But the reason why we haven't seen drought totally eliminated, the reason why we're still talking uh, about the need to potentially conserve water as we go into the summer months is because we haven't quite hit the historical averages when we're talking about the reservoir plus snowpack for the Shasta area. And Shasta is critically important uh, for California's water, the state as a whole, because we in Northern California get some of our water, a lot of our water from Shasta. And then we also send that water down to Southern California as well. So the whole state really does depend on Shasta for a lot of its water. So you can see this average line is the reservoir plus snowpack storage, and the orange line is where we're at right now. So we are not there uh, when it comes to average for the Shasta area. Again, this is just for the Shasta area. There's still time left in the water year, as we've talked about, uh, for that to change, and we are trending in the right direction. Uh, but just trying to break down these numbers a little more in a way that we really haven't seen before. Uh, looking at Northern California storage levels, when we're looking at just reservoir storage, again, still below average, but when it comes to reservoirs plus snowpack, now we are a little bit above average. So breaking it down by region, even by lake, we can see there's still certain areas that need some work. Uh, for instance, Trinity Reservoir up north still needs a lot of work done to get towards average there. Shasta, even though it is above 50%, is not quite towards average just yet for this point in the year. So we've shown this not for a while, but we've shown this previously before we had a lot of the rain, the Sierra drought busting meter. Uh, the number that we've kind of come up with is somewhere in the neighborhood of 114.1 inches. That's calculated by adding the precipitation deficits over the previous three water years for these eight particular stations in the Sierra. That's kind of the ballpark number. It's not a guaranteed. We could have less than that and still totally bust out of this drought, which is good news. Uh, but the average water year for this, these eight stations in the Sierra is 53.2 inches of liquid water equivalent. And so far, this current water year, we're at 37.3. That's about 32.7% of that 114 number. Uh, that is kind of our ballpark of water that we would like to see to bust the drought. The record wettest water year we've ever had, 2016 to 17, we saw 94.7 inches. So there's still a long ways to go really before we approach this number. Uh, but again, there's opportunities for us to totally move out of the drought without exactly hitting that number. But that would depend on lakes filling up, reservoirs filling up, and our snowpack uh, to stick with us as we work through the rest of the, the wet season and into the drier months so that snowpack can kind of naturally melt with the warmer months as opposed to uh, melting all at once with a significant rain event. One other thing that happened this week is DWR, uh, their water allocation, they changed it from 5% to 30%, and we're told that's about half of what they normally deliver in a good year. So uh, that's good news. We're, again, trending in the right direction. I don't want to say we're not. Still obviously work to do uh, with some more rain still expected uh, as we work through the next 10 days or so. Not significant events like what we've seen. Uh, but again, 
we're making progress. That's some good news. Uh, I do want to shift gears a little bit. There's a new tool in the toolbox for some water managers, not just here in California, uh, but all across the globe, because as we see from the graphics uh, that we talk about every single weekend, we have a lot of ways to look at the water that we have, whether it be in snowpack, whether that be in liquid form in a lake or a, a reservoir or river or even the ocean. But not everywhere has that luxury. We actually in California are kind of the exception where we have really good monitoring of our water and obviously for good reasons. Uh, but again, there's a new tool in the toolbox and it's called SWAT. We're looking at water from space. Let's send it over to the experts. And we just had a visit from uh, a variety of secretaries of California uh, agencies uh, last Friday to discuss how, how these uh, new measurements might help us uh, manage our resources. California is no stranger to water management. Water officials use a variety of tools to make sure not a single drop of water in this state is unaccounted for. And now they're getting another tool in their toolbox. So SWAT is the Surface Water and Ocean Topography mission. It's an international uh, mission that is a collaboration between the United States, France, um, the United Kingdom, and Canada. It is uh, flying right now all around the world. We launched in uh, December, on the 16th of December at three in the morning from uh, Vandenberg uh, Space Force Base. And what we are doing is we built a new piece of extreme engineering to observe the world's water. Uh, so we'll see all of the, uh, about 90% of, of the uh, water that is covering the earth. So we're talking about surface water, oceans, rivers, lakes, reservoirs. The observations that we will have with SWAT will help us understand how the storage changes in California in surface water. And that's pretty great. But that's that's not everything. We need, we need to manage not only the surface waters, and, and SWAT will help us do that in a, way, in a way like we've never been able to do that before. But we also need to uh, better understand groundwaters. We talk a lot about water, and rightfully so. It's a finite resource, and yet it's one we largely take for granted, especially freshwater, which is vitally important for sustaining life. Freshwater is stored in places like lakes and ice caps, but perhaps most importantly, it is stored underground. And, and about 90%, uh, 99% of the Earth's fresh water that is liquid is actually underground. And, th and that makes it a really valuable resource for, for fresh water. But the problem is it takes a whole lot of energy to go pump it. And then we've been pumping a whole lot of it for a long time. And, and, and groundwater takes generations to replenish. I, I used to think of groundwater as the savings account for water, but I now really think of it as the family heirloom. In times of drought, we always think about the water that we don't have. When we get the rain and things are looking up, it's easy to forget about just how dry it can get. Oh, I mean, li li listen, the, um, the, the beauty of, of living down here in California is, is, is gorgeous, right? We have the sun, we have the sediments, we can grow crops, it's, it's, it's really incredible. We produce a lot of the food for the nation and, and for other places on earth. Um, so that that's great, right? But then it's sunny, we have some pretty long drought and we just, hopefully just got out of a three-year drought with the rains that we got. But um, managing those resources is really uh, is, is really what we're talking about here. And so understanding how much we have in the surface water system, understanding how much we have underground and how to use it exactly for what we need it, right? So, um, I mean, the, we're lucky because we have observations of our rivers and our reservoirs in California. That's not always the case uh, around the world. It's actually mostly not the case any, anywhere else. That's where SWAT comes in. By being able to map out and see water across the globe and how it changes over time, it'll allow water managers to make more informed decisions as well as make our weather and climate models better by giving us new data about how our oceans work. It's uh, it's going to be incredible to just see those first measurements when they come. And we'll be looking at the breathing of the Earth's arteries and, and lakes and reservoirs uh, like, like we've never seen them before, including California. It's, it's going to be really fun.